Hello. As humans have progressed in creating specialized knowledge, there are also silos which are created. And then there are feelings of disconnectedness amongst practitioners as well as general public. While this is true of all the segments, this is acutely felt between humanities on the one hand and science on the other hand. This issue is not new. 70 years back, C.P. Snow wrote an excellent essay called Two Cultures. One culture represented by scientists and engineers, another one represented by arts and humanities. And these two shall never meet. Now he said that there is sometimes hostility and dislike, and most of all, lack of understanding right between two, these two segments. But was this the case all the time? No, and it has not been. Omar Khayyam was an excellent mathematician. Raja Ramana was a good pianist. Einstein played violin. In our own times, Siva Raman had an interest in Carnatic music and it did a lot of work in Mridangam. Currently, Vigneshishwar, who is a Carnatic musician, is a signal processing engineer. Dr. Palga Tamaprasad has a PhD in economics. But still, are these the rule or exceptions to the rule? I fear too that these are no exceptions to the rule and a majority of practitioners and experts in both the fields have a kind of a dislike and lack of understanding for each other. Sometimes the media people, especially from the entertainment world, brag that I failed in mathematics. I don't understand technical subjects as though it's a medal of honor. But should it be always the case? Art is supposed to represent real life all around us. Of course, when it comes to art, when it comes to theater and films, you have kings and queens and political leaders represented on the screen for us. But the idea of a scientist, of a romantic idea of a scientist, is that he sits in a corner, is very drab, and then engages in development and you know, research, is not really true. Like anybody else, all scientists have their share of love, their share of family issues, they have their share of moral and ethical issues. All of these make eminent fodder to real drama. Now, this issue has not been tackled globally. It is not that its issue has not been tackled. It has been tackled to a certain extent. So we had many of the art forms looking at science and scientific uh, aspects in various forms. We had film and TV have especially done very good work on this. We, how, how can you ever forget Beautiful Mind where John Nash was represented on its co complexities a few years back. And come to India, I don't think we have done a good work. We have done, we have had our share of Mahabharata serials and Sahasbhu serials, which we need by the way. But how many of us can ever even remember a serial on technology and science? Perhaps Bharat Te Khoj, which was aired about 20, 25 years ago, comes to our mind. So we have a lot to, lot to do in this. But globally, are people silent on this? While a lot of work has not been done, there has been progress between 1990 and 2015. You can see a plethora of science plays coming to the stage, and then you can see a book on science on stage written by Oxford professor Kirsten Shepherd Barr, who enlisted about 400 plays done over the last 400 years. So it is not something which is very new to us. And playwrights, while they were looking at other subjects earlier, started getting deeper into scientists' lives. And then there were plays like Copenhagen, for example, Arcadia, Photograph 51 and all the others which have been which have been showcased world over and today also being showcased. So what are the th things they were talking about in these plays? They were of course talking about science or scientific personalities in the center, but they were also bringing politics, they were also bringing anthropology, they were bringing history. For example, in Copenhagen, it was between Niels Bohr and Heisenberg, right, who had a relationship of a perfect Guru Shishya relationship before the World War II broke out, but after that they were on two sides of the uh, war. Now when they two meet, do they talk niceties and only science? Will they, the country not go, go behind them and then restrict them to talk openly? These kind of things are dealt with in place like that. For example, Photograph 51 was a story, is a story on Rosalind Franklin, who is a co-contributor to DNA Helix. She didn't get the Nobel Prize. And in that play, a subtle rivalry between British and American research programs gets spoken, spoken about. So like this, there are many plays which have been kind of enacted and then brought to stage by livening up right life stories around science and scientific endeavor. 
Now, while all this was happening, what were we doing in Mysore? I have been a Mysore theatre person for some time now, and we were thinking, saying that why all, we, all of this observe? What can we do about it? it? This was in 2017, and then we had two plays around our belt, and then we said. Copenhagen we had enacted, we had also enacted bro uh, Broken Blossom, which is based on menopause, the scientific theories behind menopause. Why only in humans our menstruation cycle stops around 45 in, in women? So this was a story in that play. And when we got together, we said we should create a forum. And that was the birth of Mysore Science Theatre Festival. And then we started in 2018. 2018, we started this uh, activity after some planning and we had three plays. One was Copenhagen, another was on Proof. Proof was on a mathematical scientist. Generally, mathematics is found to be very, very active before 25 years. But what happens to a mathematics professor who loses its ability in the later years of life? Does mathematics also flow in the family? These kind of questions were asked in the, in the play Proof. We also had Broken Blossom, as I, as I referred earlier. This festival was also inaugurated by C.R. Satya. C.R. Satya happens to be the first engineer or first of many engineers who joined ISRO and you can see that he is carrying a part of the rocket in Tumba, Kerala. So it was very appropriate that he could come over, this person who was involved with history of technology in India, he could come over and then inaugurate uh, this festival for us. So this was in 2018 and come 2019, we were wondering whether it is a one-off show or we will continue that for some more time. So we had our share of, uh, of uh, difficulties in engaging uh, the place. If you recall, 2018 were, were English plays, basically brought into Canada as adaptations. In, even in uh, 2019, we kind of ended up with the same thing. We brought uh, English plays adapted. Galileo was one of the first Canada plays to be adapted by J. R. Lakshman Rao and Ramachandra Murthy. It was, of course, written by Bertolt Brecht. And it was on the life of Galileo, all the tribulations and then trials and tribulations which he followed. Square Root of a Sonnet was on the life of S. Chandrasekhar of Black Hole fame. Uh, his life and his life, why did he go from Cambridge to uh, Chicago and not, not pursue in the same lines? And he had to wait for 40 years before he got the Nobel Prize. Why did that happen? And we had Lisa Mitner who narrowly missed getting a Nobel Prize. And all these tribulations were shown on this stage. We were also quite aware that we didn't have Kannada plays to be showcased. So we said, why not we create a writer's workshop? And we had a writer's workshop. We had many people from the science stream coming and talking about not only the science aspect of it, it was not about teaching science, it was about telling them around science, what, what happened, how it happened, etc. So we had Balachan Rao speaking on mathematics, we had Palahalli Vishwanath speaking about uh, uh, nuclear physics and politics around it, we had Krishnamurti uh, speaking about environment and how some multinationals actually provide sponsored research and then that enables a wonky kind of research in the, in the, in the uh, area of environmental science. And we had Sabisachi Chatterjee, who is from Ramana Research Institute, spoke about uh, astrophysics and the personalities around that, including Aribata and then Brahma Gupta. So while we did this in 2019, did it result in some plays coming around? We had about 15 people participating. We have one or two plays. So we had a reasonable success, I would say, after conducting this uh, writer's uh, festival. Come 2020, while the two editions had reasonably enthusiastic response, including I don't understand science, why science has to be brought in, science subjects, etc. I think people were warming up. It is also a question of audience being educated over a, over a period of time. In 2020, it was a question of abundant enthusiasm around us. CFTRA came together and then CFTRA is a Central Food Technological Research Institute in Mysore. They came, came up and then said, we will support you. Please do it when we are doing science communication conference in their uh, vicinity. So we had an opportunity to showcase three more plays here. And this time, two were in Canada, original plays in Canada. One was on Ramanujam, another was on Arivina Angaldi, which is an approach to, approach to science. And the third one was on Calculus. All, all of us believe that uh, history tells us, or whatever we read in books, that Newton invented Calculus. But the story, if you go one step below, is not really true. Leibniz did this invention 60 years back and there was a big spat between Newton and Leibniz around it. This plays around that to understand what happened in history right, during that time. One other thing which happened, which also we see internationally, is that whenever scientific technological conferences take place, in the evening you have cultural performances. 
especially in phys physics conferences we have seen some of these science plays getting uh, played out there and at the end of it there is a conversation between the scientists who are attending the conference and the artists who are on the stage so this hopefully will bring the distance between the two cultures similar thing happened in Mysore when we had a discussion after each play with the audience with the science communicators and to, to kind of discuss and debate what works and what does not work when 2020 ended of course covid came and all of us know what happened in uh, wave one we all went through our share of anguish but when the wave one was declining around december uh, uh, december in january we thought is there a glimmer of hope because we didn't want to lose the streak of doing a fourth edition of uh, science uh, science theater festival and we had a small gap that happened to be the gap in February, February and 28th February happens to be National Science Day. So on that day we had QED. QED is on the life of Richard Feynman, the celebrated uh, physicist, is all his lives and tribulations, how he went through the atom bomb creation, how did he repent later, his teaching abilities and all of that story was colorfully brought out. It had a fantastic response uh, and since then we have had about 15 uh, shows of uh, uh, this play. So you can see that you have physics uh, students being brought in as a character and then this made us uh, uh, go live. So we have had four editions of this festival. But while all this is happening, what is happening world over? The enthusiasm of 2000 to 2015 of a lot of plays coming across has kind of dwindled. But if you open the lid, you will find that a lot of activity going underneath. There are a lot of plays which are being written by new uh, playwrights. A playwright like Lauren Gunderson, for example, who is the most produced playwright in America, has written a number of plays, including on environmental uh, uh, science, which is, which is happening today. And there are a lot of academic studies too. For example, Cambridge uh, University produced a, uh, had a conference and it produced a, a tome which is called uh, Theatre in Science, which had wonderful articles on how the practice of uh, theatre in science has progressed uh, since, uh, since centuries and especially in the last uh, 20 years. We also had a, a collection of essays called Science and Dramatic. One of the essays asked this question, is that is ethics important to be trained for scientists who are getting trained in scientific subjects? Now you will see a parallel here that whoever is studying business administration, people have felt for a long time now that ethics in business is important. Business ethics without, without business without ethics is not good. Hence during MBA, they are taught a course on ethics. Now if that can happen in business administration classes, why not for scientists? Why should they be only trained in science? So there is this new thinking that how to train scientists on an ongoing basis is being brought out by these academic kind of studies. Now while all this is happening, what is happening in India? India we have a, some way to go further, both on the, both on the uh, staging of plays as well as in the academia. It is, not to say, it is not to say that there is no progress achieved, but there is a lot which can be done to kind of be, being there, up there with them, especially in a world where we pride ourselves being the technological capital of the future for the whole world. So what do we need to do at the end of it, right? What can we do in the future, right, to kind of bridge the gap further? In the art of theatre, I would suggest uh, without being preachy too much is just increase the number of quantity of scripts and then quality will follow. Today if whoever wants to bring science to the stage and it's not about only teaching of science, looking at science creation, scientific endeavor in all its uh, complexities, you have dearth of scripts right, available uh, to practitioners uh, in India and elsewhere and then that is something which we need to, which all of us need to look at and then there is plenty of opportunity uh, to be doing there. We also need to think of right about, uh, while we gloat about our own contributions to science, which kind of declined after 12th century, there is a lot which we can do around Bhaskaracharya, for example, around our recent scientists, including Kosambi. How many of us know Kosambi, who was a wonderful scientist in many fields, including uh, history, for example, right? So he has a multifaceted personality, and those personality can be brought to, brought to life. You are already aware of Nambi Narayan's case, recent case, where there is a movie made out of him, but his complexity of work, his contributions to ISRO's uh, thing could also be brought, and similarly SN Bose and then Anandi Bai kind of people. All of these are people who have contributed immensely to the scientific endeavor in India, and all of them deserve to be brought about in all their colors right to the stage. Third is that we need in regional language. We, you will see English theater 
especially in metros, you will see sporadically uh, science theater being played out, but we need more of it in uh, tier 2 and tier 3 cities and in regional languages and there is a lot to be done, right, in regional language for that and our endeavor would be to create more and more scripts, right, and then opportunities for this. And finally, all of this material will be of no waste unless amateur troops take up this as a, as a, uh, this one for, for, in their own, uh, their own productions. So we recommend at least one amateur troupe, one play per year, if they can take up in science, in science and then do it off, right, in various parts of, uh, uh, various parts of uh, uh, India, that would take the whole journey much further and then bring the two communities together. And finally, we don't need to call, we should not be calling science theatre as a niche genre. We want to be called a good drama, but that good drama should also contain a lot of science and then scientific personalities around it. Thank you.